We now have come to the topic of gas sensor calibration. Even though the CO2 and O2 detectors are factory calibrated, for good careful research you should verify daily and if necessary recalibrate these gas sensors. Both sensors are linear therefore we need at least two cal gases to be able to calculate the slope and intercept. In the manual we suggest the technique of adjusting electronically in order to calibrate the two sensors. In this way we change the gain and offset of the electronics to fit the fixed calibration equations in the worksheet software. First let's have a look at zeroing. Note nitrogen gas cannot be used for zeroing the laser diode oxygen sensor. It simply does not respond to uh, gas with less than about 5% oxygen. It's fine, nitrogen gas is fine for, caliber for zeroing uh, the carbon dioxide sensor. We suggest you use as a zero gas room air with the carbon dioxide and water vapor removed. Besides, this is free. You should remove the carbon dioxide because this is an unknown level in room air depending upon the number of occupants in the room. Also, water vapor is an unknown and the humidity in the air can dilute the oxygen value significantly. So let's see how we obtain the zeroing gas. We pump room air into the carbon dioxide scrubber followed by a drawing column. These were supplied with the system. The drawing column should be second since the carbon dioxide scrubber can add back water vapor. The output of the drawing column is connected to the gas in on the S147 so that we pump in carbon dioxide free dry gas for analysis. Note the naphion should be removed since the naphion can add back water vapor from the atmosphere to this dried gas. Here I show a photo of the zeroing setup. So pump room air into the carbon dioxide scrubber followed by the drying column and connect the sample line to the output of the drying column and pump in the zero gas for analysis. Note the naphion is removed to avoid adding water vapor back to the dried gas. So let's see an actual zeroing procedure. So I have cal gas uh, a zeroing cal gas being pumped into the S147. And you can see the carbon dioxide value is about 0% and the oxygen value about 20.95, that which you expect in dry air. If the carbon dioxide value is not zero, adjust the CO2 zero on the front of the S147 with a little screwdriver supplied. Similarly, if the oxygen level is not 20.95, adjust the oxygen span on the front of the S147 with the screwdriver. So we now have zeroed the sensors. So next we have to span with the second gas, cal gas. We suggest a commercial mixture of about 5% carbon dioxide, 16% oxygen, with a balance of nitrogen. These can be purchased and may vary slightly in the carbon dioxide and oxygen values. Again, we will remove the naphion. So let's see a spanning setup.
So using the regulator on the Cal gas tank as well as the valve on the rotometer, obtain about 400 mils per minute of Cal gas. This is not a critical value. Put that 400 mils per minute into the supply T, the one with the large OD clear tubing, and connect the sample line to the bottom of the T. That way we pull in 300 mils per minute to be analyzed in the S147. Note the naphion is removed to avoid adding water vapor from the air to the dry cal gas that you obtain. Also, you can see here we waste about 100 mils per minute to the atmosphere. Here we have a photo of the span setup with cal gas being adjusted with the valve on the rotometer as well as the regulator on the cal gas tank to be about 400 mils per minute. This 400 mils per minute comes out the top of the rotometer into the supplied T with the large clear tubing. To the bottom of the T we connect the sample line and pull in 300 mils per minute to the S147 for gas analysis. Note the naphion is removed to avoid adding water vapor back to the dry cal gas. So let's see an actual span set up. I'll change now from the zeroing gas to the spanning gas. Our particular Cal gas was 5.1% carbon dioxide, 16% oxygen. And you can see we obtained these values. If the carbon dioxide value is not measured to be that in your Cal gas, then change the CO2 span on the front of the S147 with the screwdriver to obtain whatever value you expect in your Cal gas. Similarly, with the oxygen, adjust the O2 zero on the front of the S147 to obtain the actual oxygen level in your particular cal gas. It's probably worthwhile to cycle back and check the zero gas and as well perhaps a second check of the cal gas just to make sure there has been no changes during zeroing and spanning. So we now have the two gas sensors calibrated. If you're interested you can actually see the equations to which we calibrate. Double click on the CO2 column and there's the CO2 linear e uh, calibration equation. Similarly with the oxygen. It has a linear calibration as well. So reiterating, we are adjusting the gain and offset of the electronics to fit these fixed calibration equations in the software. Just as an aside, I mentioned in an earlier clip that it's possible to calibrate in software. You may want to uh, try this method. However, in the manual we have discussed electronic technique.